One of the fantastic things about using a software-based notation system rather than the good old pen and ink of the past is that once we have written some stuff into our score, we can get the system to play that music back for us. And I think that's a huge step forward for all of us composers. MuseScore has some excellent playback features and we're gonna have a look at those now. Essentially, we can click on any note anywhere in our score and start the music playing from there. If I was to click on this A, for example, and hit the space bar, we'll see that the music plays from exactly that point. And actually, it carries on playing, even though there's no notes left in our composition. We've got some empty bars, we've got some rests, and you can see that blue shadow just passing across them there. And essentially, that's probably what we're going to be doing the most. When we're clicking around, we want to just hear how a new chord or a new phrase sounds in our music. We just click on the first note that we want to hear and press space, and we will hear those notes played back to us. Up here on the top bar, we have a few buttons related to playback. Of course, we have a play button that will start playing back the music from wherever the playhead is. This blue shadow is what we call the playhead. And if we start it and stop it, you'll see it will just carry on from where it left off. It's always able to just remember where it was and then start again. We also have a button here that will take us back to the beginning of the composition. So if we want to go back to the start, that's the button we need. A very useful tool if we're working on a phrase or we want to hear it as we're working on it, we can actually set a loop for a certain part of the music. If we select some element of the music, I've just selected this bar here by clicking in the white space, not on any of the notes, that gives us a, a bar selection. And then I click this um, loop button, this arrow going around in a circle, what you'll see is I've got now some flags around this bar. And if I press the space bar or hit this play button, what you'll see is we just get that bar over and over again. And what's nice about this is that if I want to play around with some of this, I can very quickly make some changes and then start hearing again what it sounds like. I want to make some more changes. Let's move this down here and start it again. So I can use these loop markers to set a certain part of the music aside and work on it and listen back to it and work on it some more and sort of evolve it over time whilst hearing that part of the music over and over again. There's a couple more buttons that might come in handy. So we have the option to either turn on or turn off repeats. If you have a piece of music that has lots and lots of repeats, perhaps you don't want to hear those sections of the music over and over again. So you can just click that button to turn it off. Also, we have the ability here to either make the score move with the playhead. So you'll see if I carry on playing this and turn my loop off, what you'll see is the, the playhead will carry on moving. This kind of blue shadow will just keep moving down the page. And what we'll see is when we get further down the score, so essentially into a part of the score that isn't really on the screen, what we're going to see is the screen's view move to update that um, view for us. So if we're moving through a very big composition, there you go, so it's moved down a line so we can see bar 13 because that's where the playhead is right now. That's what that's all about. So if we have a big, big score, we want to be able to see where we're at in the music. And finally, we have the ability to add a metronome in. If we need just a reminder of what the underlying beat and tempo is, how that relates to the time signature of the music and, and all of that stuff, we can turn our metronome on. There are a few more playback features that we can't get to from the top bar. Instead, we have to come into the view menu at the top of the screen. If we open the view menu, we can then open the play panel or press F11. It does exactly the same thing. Here we can do some things like change the tempo of the playback. So if we wanted the music to play back really fast, we can just drag this slider up here and we'll see that when we play the music back, it's much faster. Equally, there's a, a kind of general volume control here. Now, of course, we're gonna be talking about things like dynamics, which also affect the volume of the music, but just in terms of our general playback level, we can make that louder or softer here. Also, of course, we can skip through the music. There's a kind of nice slider here that allows us to jump to any position in the score that we want and a repetition of some of the features that we saw in the top bar as well. So a play button, a back to the start button, a metronome button, and all these kind of useful tools that help us to hear our score being played back to us. And, and really, I just encourage you to just enjoy that moment. Enjoy that moment of writing some music into your score and hearing it played back to you because we're essentially the first generation of composers who've ever had that opportunity to have a, a composing tool that is so responsive that we can write our music down on the page and it's played back to us. It's almost kind of like a Harry Potter magic thing. You know, if you told a composer in the 18th century or the 17th century that one day we'd have this tool 
all available. I think they probably never have believed us. So let's just take a moment and really enjoy the magic and the power of the software that we've got in front of us. And then we're going to look at some more stuff.